What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's do it. That's right, guys. We're coming to you from Las Vegas, also known as Sin City, where what happens in Vegas supposedly stays in Las Vegas. What do you guys think about that? Also, the gaming capital of the United States in terms of casinos. Before we get into this travel guide, I want to let you know that there will be timestamps below so that you can bounce around the video from attraction to attraction. Also, there will be links to other Las Vegas videos. Let's keep going. Las Vegas is one of the most popular tourist destinations in all of the United States. Last year in 2022, they had 38.8 million people visit Las Vegas. But guess what? That's still short of the pre-pandemic numbers, which were a bit higher. So people are now starting to come back to Las Vegas. And I'd imagine if you're watching this, you're probably one of them. Although the numbers are up 21% since 2021. The population of Las Vegas is 650,000 in Las Vegas, but if you include the greater metropolitan area, it's 2.8 million people, almost 3 million people living in greater Las Vegas. They also just welcomed their first NFL team, the Las Vegas Raiders. And they also have an ice hockey team called the Golden Knights, both of which you can attend their games while visiting Las Vegas if it's during that season. So do some research on those seasons if you're from out of the state. Now in this travel guide, we're gonna take you around to many of the different casinos. We're gonna show you a lot of the Las Vegas attractions. Some of this stuff is going to be free, but we're gonna start out here at the Bellagio Fountains and show you what it looks like around 6 p.m. in February on a brisk winter night, the temperature outside was around 48 degrees at the time we were filming this in February. It does get chilly in the winter in Las Vegas, and it gets very hot. Here at the Bellagio, you can watch this show for free. The fountains basically go every hour from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m., but the schedule does change depending on the season. That was just the winter hours. Bellagio is essentially smack dab in the middle of the strip, so when you're walking down the strip, when you're at the Bellagio, Caesar Palace area, you'll know you're right in the middle of it all. This is basically the heart and the pulse of the strip right here at the Bellagio. Now a cheaper alternative to the Bellagio is going to be the Caesars Palace. You can look to save around $100 to $200 a night for your room just by simply staying right next door to the Bellagio at Caesars Palace. It's a little bit older hotel. Also there's the Cosmopolitan. Now the Cosmopolitan is a very ritzy, luxurious hotel to the other side of Bellagio as you can see by these pink and purple chandeliers in the inside. Very ritzy. This is mostly a place you go without the kids, you and your girlfriend, you and your wife, or your husband, whatever you're going for, this is where you're gonna wanna stay. If you've got a little bit higher budget, I would say, the Cosmopolitan is a really nice hotel casino. So as you're walking around the strip, you're gonna be going around from Hotel Casino Resort to Hotel Casino Resort. Uh, Treasure Island is another one that's an older one. But after building up quite the appetite, what do you guys say we stop and get some good food? And this time we're gonna head over towards the Venetian. And this is called Wakuda at the Venetian. Yeah, so here we are trying sushi, but in Las Vegas, there's so many different varieties of food. Actually, Las Vegas is rated in the top 10 in the country of the United States for best places for foodies. So this is the carpaccio. This is an amberjack fish. You can see that little green right there. That's actually like a pepperish wasabi. And let's give it a whirl. Let's dip it a little bit. Along with sushi, you can actually get some Wagyu beef. We're gonna try the Wagyu because we don't want it to get too cold here. We're gonna dip it. They say you can uh, put a garlic chip with it and that's apricot right there now let's uh all right so now we've got this uh salmon here it comes from new zealand i'm gonna dip it a little bit and as you're noticing, this is some prime time, high quality food that we're eating here. All right, now we're on to the lobster roll. You can say that, beautiful lemon. Let's give it a dip here. And... Now the thing is with eating all of this gourmet food, it's not something that I do 
in other places. It's something that I would do in Las Vegas because this is something that really is a full gastronomical experience here in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, so do prepare your bank account for that. Make sure you check the prices before you order each one of these so you don't get any sneaky surprises at the end. And right when we walked outside of the restaurant, we had to burn off all of this carbohydrate that we were eating and calories. So we went over to the Palazzo and we checked out more of the Venetian area as you will see next. Well, we're having a good night. We're here at the Venetian. We're at the Dorsey. We're gonna get a drink. The Dorsey is a glamorous bar inside of the Venetian. There are many different glamorous bars, but because you're in a glamorous bar, be ready to pay glamorous bar prices. It's called a spicy flamingo. That spicy flamingo was delicious. That watermelon with that drink just goes down perfectly. Uh, I've never really tried spicy watermelon mixed with alcohol like that. So there's a drink idea for those of you who are a mixologist at home. Now what we're going to do is head over to the high roller, which is a big Ferris wheel. It's at the link. But on the way, we're going to check out the flamingo real quick because it is on the way from the Venetian. Here we are at the link. You can see the giant Ferris wheel right here, one of the biggest in the world. They also have a zip line called Fly Link. You can do it for $40 per person if you look right over here. Yeah, some adrenaline filled activities right here at the link hotel and casino. If you're looking for an old Las Vegas classic resort, go to the Flamingo. That's where Bugsy Siegel founded that hotel casino. A little later on in this video, we're actually going to go to the Mob Museum and find out more information about Bugsy Siegel. And for those of you who really love Instagram and Facebook, we got the Selfie Museum right here for you. There's many different bars around here, but you'll notice a lot of them are associated with ice or cooling down. Although that doesn't really work out for the four months out of the year when Las Vegas is really cold. The best time to visit Las Vegas is going to be from the middle of March or April time frame until November. Las Vegas is a city that mostly caters to the hot season. So the Ferris wheel is actually called the High Roller here at the Link, L-I-N-Q. Now we just showed you the Selfie Museum, but I'm gonna show you the Madame Tussaud Wax Museum, which I really think is probably the best selfie museum because you get to take pictures next to, I don't know, Vin Diesel, Shaquille O'Neal. So here we are at Madame Tussauds, standing next to Vin Diesel. You got Mr. Playboy here himself. You also have the likes of Johnny Depp and friends like, I don't know, Brad Pitt. Look how big Shaq is, that is one tall man. You also have life size of Babe Ruth the Bambino. You have Biggie Smalls and so much more. You also have good old Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Something interesting to know about Las Vegas is you can actually walk around with an open container on the strip. This here is tequila on the rocks. Yeah, at any one of these bars on the strip, they'll say, you know, you could take this to go. So you don't have to really worry about where you're going to drink it when you're at one of these strip bars. Uh, so, hey, when in Vegas, do as they say in Vegas. And what we're going to do now is actually show you more around the Venetian. We're going to show you inside the interior as well as the Grand Canal shops and the gondola. People actually like to take a gondola ride. Usually it's couples. Uh, it does cost around $30 per person. The price does fluctuate. So you can verify online how much it's going to cost for you and your significant other to actually do a gondola ride. Some people take their families, but I think it's more of a romantic thing, not really intended for kids. As you can see, Las Vegas really does the themed hotels very well. This has always been a tradition in Las Vegas. Every time they build a new hotel, they'll kind of theme it after something else. This one's Venice, Italy. You've obviously got Paris, Paris, which is after Paris. We'll be showing you that here shortly. Then they've got New York, New York, which is a New York style hotel. In fact, when I'm in Las Vegas, I typically stay at the New York, New York. It's kind of becoming a tradition. It is right across the street from the MGM Grand. So 
Las Vegas is actually the 24th largest city in the United States with a population of 700,000 in the city center. But if you go out into the metro area, it's 2.2 million people. One of the cool things in Las Vegas, they have these overpasses, and if you don't want to walk up the stairs because you can't, you can just take one of these elevators, and the next thing you know, you're right out in front of the walkway. Let's see. Oh, the loft. Here we are. This area that we're mostly arriving at here is called Planet Hollywood. It's also got the Miracle Mile shops. This is where Paris is also located. Paris Casino is actually one of my favorite places to go for casino gaming. But also, you can go eat at the restaurant inside the Eiffel Tower. If you guys wanted to get that, you would probably want to book that reservation before arriving to make sure you got that secured. Um, but this whole area of Paris, really a nice place. Again, one of my favorite casinos just for casino gaming. As you're probably noticing, walking around the Strip in the daytime and the nighttime, two totally different experiences. I would say Las Vegas is more of a nighttime city. You know, so prepare to hit the town around about four o'clock in the afternoon at the earliest. That's when you kind of wake up and get the blood flowing. And then, you know, you're ready to hit the casino and dinner time around seven or eight and be ready to go deep into the night. We're just walking around here in the daytime, but this is what it's gonna look like. It's still crowded, this is at the Bellagio. Now we're gonna show you around the Bellagio Garden. This is a conservatory and botanical garden that changes themes depending on what's going on in the world at that time. While we were here, you can see they were doing a Chinese New Year kind of garden because it was February, that's when the Chinese New Year happens. But the, they will change up the theme of this area depending on the season, like I said. And I think 2023 is the year of the rabbit because there was a lot of different rabbit figurines around here. But actually, I verified it on Google. Yes, it is the year of the rabbit. Not sure exactly what that means, but if you know, you can drop a comment below letting us know exactly what the year of the rabbit has in store for us. But yeah, this is a look at that botanical garden conservatory that I was telling you about. So do add this to your list. Like I said, the exhibit does change. Now, as we continue to show you around the Bellagio, I want to let you guys know if you check the link description below, if you check the links in the description below, you'll see a video to the top 50 things to do while visiting Las Vegas, as well as a Las Vegas strip travel guide and a things to know while visiting Las Vegas guide. So we've got lots of Las Vegas content to help you guys and also best hotels in Las Vegas. So check those links below. Now let's keep going. Good news for you chocolate lovers. If you love chocolate, come to the Bellagio. They have the world's largest chocolate fountain. Check it out. Man, these Las Vegas hotels, they really are like a palace, aren't they? Especially this Bellagio. It's truly amazing how you can experience what it's like to live this luxurious lifestyle. Anyways, we're gonna go over to Caesar's Palace now. Again, we're gonna go deeper inside, show you some of the cooler things they have inside here. Before the Bellagio was cool, Caesar's Palace was the top dog in town. And it still might even be better in some regards, especially if you check out this Trevi Fountain that we're gonna show you, which is a replica of what they have in Rome.
So here we have the Fountain of the Gods right here in Caesar's Palace. You don't have to go all the way to Rome to go see the Trevi Fountain. You can just come right here to Las Vegas. Look at this. I mean, it's a real marble stone relic right here. All right, maybe that was an exaggeration. This is not quite the Trevi Fountain of Rome because the Trevi Fountain in Rome is outdoors and it's a lot more exquisite than this. But hey, for an indoor hotel casino fountain, And inside here, they do have a Cheesecake Factory, a Nike store, and some other shopping that you can do. And the area is known as the Atlantis right here in Caesar's Palace. Here at New York, New York, and we got the steak salad. Steak salad's a cheaper alternative for me than these really expensive meals. You know, for $19, I get some fiber and steak. Pretty good deal, thanks to New York, New York. Now we're gonna actually head over to the Stratosphere. The Stratosphere is actually the second tallest tower of its kind in the Western Hemisphere, second only behind the CN Tower in Toronto. All right, guys, we're here at the Stratosphere. We're going to go to the top and we're going to check this place out. Let's go. So the general admission for the SkyPod observation deck here at the Stratosphere was $18. You can go online and see if you can get a better price for that. Uh, but I do believe that's going to be the standard price if you want to go all the way up here to the top. Now, once you get up here, you're going to see that they have rides. They also have a restaurant. And we're just going to show you around. It's really high up there and it's open air. So it's kind of crazy. For those of you who are sensitive to heights, this might not be for you to be honest. Just take that into consideration. Also, off in the distance, you can see the MSG Sphere Las Vegas being built at the Venetian. It's actually a music and entertainment arena being built. It's the largest of its kind with this kind of design. Now let's show you how crazy these rides are. <laughs> Well, now it's another day and another night. We're gonna do some exploring around the shops at Crystal. This area here also connects to the Aria Hotel. Aria and Cosmopolitan are brother and sister or sister and sister, whatever you wanna call it. Very high end hotels. We already talked about the Cosmopolitan, but this area where the, where the shops at Crystal's are, very interesting with the Aria. It's a lot newer and more modern than the Bellagio. Also less crowds here at the Aria, especially in the shops of Crystal.
All right, so far you've seen some of my favorite hotels. You've seen the Aria, you've seen the Cosmopolitan, you've seen the Bellagio, the Caesars Palace, the Venetian, New York, New York, which is the room you're looking at here. Now we're actually going to head over to what might just be the best one in all of Las Vegas. It is called The Win. They have The Win and Encore. All right, now we're here at The Win. We're going to go inside and see this beautiful hotel. Now, The Win is a five star hotel. And for those of you who are wondering what is the difference between Encore and The Win, the general rule of thumb is the rooms at Encore are about 100 square feet bigger than those at The Win. Also, the Encore building is three years newer. And this amazing little indoor garden that we're walking through is in the actual Win area of the Win Encore property. But you'll see very interesting place. It is like a ballroom floor down here with the marble. And they've really put a lot of detail into the intricacies to build this property. If you go outside to the pool, you'll see just as amazing of a property. The casino gaming area is also really glamorous and glitzy. Really, like I said, something about this place is amazing. And this morning we're actually at the Fashion Show Mall. This is where we're gonna start. Right behind me they have the Fantasy Lab. It's an immersive art exhibit. Uh, for those of you who wanna go in there, that's one thing to do if you're looking for things to do in Las Vegas on the Strip. But for now we're just gonna show you around the Fashion Show Mall. This Fashion Show Mall is literally just across the street from the Wynn Hotel. All right, here we are at Area 51 by Meow Wolf. Let's go inside. 
Now what we're going to do is actually head to the Area 15, which is also in coordination with Meow Wolf, famously known for its exhibit in Santa Fe, New Mexico. But along with uh, the Meow Wolf, they have other exhibits here. You could probably spend a whole day here. A lot of it's going to be virtual reality. Uh, it's a really popular place for kids. Uh, but like I said, a whole day here might even take more. It's a small area, but they have so much going on to stimulate your senses. It's really amazing. They also have the Illuminarium here. But Meow Wolf is probably the big ticket in town. So if you look right behind me, you can see they've got the dinner in the sky, like they've got Dubai. Look at that thing. It just goes up. Great views of Las Vegas. Now what we're going to do is actually explore around downtown Las Vegas at Fremont Street. All right, here we are at the Golden Nugget. We're going to go inside. They have an aquarium and a slide that we're going to check out. And the Golden Nugget's actually famous for its pool. They have this water slide that goes right through the Shark Tank Aquarium. Really cool, but you have to be a guest in order to ride that slide or even go to the pool. All right guys, here we are at the Fremont Experience, this long walking area in downtown Las Vegas. Fremont Street really gets going early in the afternoon, so around two o'clock all the way until about midnight, Fremont Street is absolutely pumping basically seven days a week. You can see they have this big rooftop, which comes in handy in case it's snowing in Las Vegas like it did when we were here in February, but also, when it's really, really hot in Las Vegas in June, July, and August, that also comes in handy for there. So, like I said, the Vegas weather really is having some bipolar moments.
Yeah, so here we are, middle of February, and it's snowing. You can see the little snowflakes right there. What we're going to do now is actually go inside the Ma Museum, one of the best museums in the country and right here in Las Vegas. Yeah, earlier we talked about Bugsy Siegel. He was one of the founders of Las Vegas hotel resorts, such as the Flamingo. But also there was other mafia people that were out here, Al Capone. You also had some other important names. And if you wanted to know all about that history, all you have to do is head over here to the Mob Museum and basically let your mind wander back in time. Because wow, what an interesting museum. It's probably one of the best museums I've been to in all of the West Coast actually. And it's in a small little building. It's called the National Museum of Organized Crime and Law Enforcement. To me, I just found this to be so interesting. So after a big day walking around where there was a little bit of snow, we decided to get some food and I got Mexican food, fajitas to be exact. So you can see the, the diversity in food in Las Vegas is certainly abundant. So I'm at Krispy Kreme and I got a fresh glazed donut. So here we are in front of the Miracle Mile. The outside is currently under construction. You can see the scaffolding, but let's go inside and see what's going on with those shops. And here we are at Resorts World, which is Conrad Hilton. We're going to go inside there right now.
So here we are at the Adventure Dome in Circus Circus. It's actually free to enter here. The only thing is if you want to ride the rides, you have to pay for a ride. Yeah, so Circus Circus is an old hotel, but that Adventure Dome is one reason that's worth heading over that direction, especially if you have kids, because you can get some pretty cool roller coasters out of that deal. Anyways, now, speaking of roller coasters, let's go check out the roller coaster and ride over at New York, New York, and then head over to the Excalibur. The Excalibur is a very old hotel at this point in time because it was popular in the 90s when it first opened, but nowadays it's not as popular, although, if you're looking for cheap hotels and you want to stay on the Strip, Excalibur might just be for you. In fact, if you head just across the way also, you'll go to the Luxor, which is another area you can get cheap hotels. I've seen them for as cheap as $34 a night, but the one catch is they do charge resort amenity fees. I did hear that the US government is stepping in to regulate that. I don't know when that's gonna roll out, so I don't know what Vegas is gonna do about these resort amenity fees that sometimes are more expensive than the hotel. It's kind of like a deceptive marketing tactic that they've used. And at the very end of the strip towards the south is the Mandalay Bay right next to the Luxor. We're gonna show you around the Mandalay Bay area and actually go to the aquarium there. All right, so we're here at Mandalay Bay. We're gonna go inside the reef, which is an aquarium here at Mandalay Bay. It is $29 per adult. And if you're a military or a veteran, it's actually $2 off each ticket.
And now that we've got another day in the books, we're actually going to go out and get some more food. This time we're doing sushi again. It seemed like we were always doing sushi or Mexican food in Las Vegas. Although the other thing to consider is Wagyu, although Wagyu is very expensive, but yes, more sushi and drinks. Also, after that, we're gonna go do some Top Golf. Show you guys over there at the MGM what's going on with Top Golf. A place to go to burn off some of those calories. There's a lot to do outside of Las Vegas. There's obviously the Hoover Dam, which has some tours you can do around the hydroelectric plant. There's also the Valley of Fire. But like I said previously, if you guys wanna see some more of those things to do around Las Vegas, 50 things to do to be exact on our video, just check the links in the description below. Also, you can check at the end of the video. We'll also put links on the end screens, but that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV from Las Vegas. We are headed back to Phoenix. This time we're taking the Flix bus, one of those buses that are in America along with Greyhound. But this one's just one step above, I would say. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Check on the links to the 50 things to do in Las Vegas and the hotels video right here at the end. <laughs>